All right, all right. Great, 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 great Juneteenth week, weekend. I hope everybody had a safe weekend. Uh, you know, this this uh, you know, this weekend is now recognized as a, a national holiday. Um, uh, and uh, you know, and, and you know, things show up, man, for the good, and you know, uh, we still have a lot of way to go. I think just us as a people, uh, mindset, just 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 being understanding, guys, it's all about growth. Um, don't matter about what color you are, we all got to wake up and understand that we got a, we got accountability out here. So it's not always about being victim either. Okay, sometimes we got to understand that no, we got to we got to we got to get out of that victim victim victimized stage and uh, and start understanding we got to have some accountability. It don't matter you know what we're wearing, what color we are, police, firemen, whatever the case may be. You know you still have to be accountable out here. So, uh, you know, but hey, man, it goes all out to our, you know, let's 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 give uh, appreciation to the people that's opened up some doors. But, you know, I'm all about the mental empowerment. This is Meta Marvin, a.k.a. Funding CEO. Uh, um, you know, I have the Meta Biz Show uh, here on 100.5 FM and 103.3 FM. And uh, so, you know, we talk about a lot of things when it comes to economic empowerment. Uh, we talk about a lot of social, uh, civil issues that's going on in our community. Uh, you know, I love bringing on guys and, uh, you know, women and men that's in their own right doing things that's just, you know, sometimes it gets overlooked. Uh, you know, a lot of people that uh, that's up in certain levels of accountability, status, positions, uh, you know, it looks all good from the outside, but sometimes if you can see it from where they see it at, you know, God's put them in a place and they put the right person there, uh, but they're the only one that can tell that story, you know? So where's a place that we can let them tell their story and let them be as vulnerable and being open as possible? And uh, me being a desert storm vet, I was in the Navy for eight years, uh, seen a little bit out there. Uh, you know, and, uh, you know, really understand what it is to serve, um, you know, and then I uh, came and did some retroactive time at the Veterans Hospital. And I've been a, a entrepreneur since 2008. Um, I was uh, a guy that anchored the deal that brought a lot of economic empowerment to the black community in Charlotte. I was uh, the liaison that put the deal with Hampton University athletic director that brought CIAA here. City made uh, millions and millions and millions off of hospitality. We made money off a lot of uh, charitable things that was going on. Um, you know, so with that being said, you know, I've always sort of been wanted to be uh, not the first one, but always wanted to be, you know, be the risk taker to go out, and step into the deep water. So now uh, I do a lot with the financial literacy. Uh, I teach at schools. I, you know, I teach in a lot of halfway houses. You know, I give people that second chance financial show, you know, these ex-cons about, you know, that was one phase of your life. But let me show you something, brother, which you could do with that on your with, with that on your record. There's still some more freedom out here. You're just ignorant. You just don't know what it is yet. These are some things that you can do. These are some aspects you can do. These are some things you can do in entrepreneurship. So I'm an entrepreneur, freedom minded, passion with freedom type movement. Um, and so now the last eight years, I've opened, wrote, uh, have a book called Passion for Freedom on Amazon. I also have a non-depository bank called Lindio Central Charlotte. It's a financial technology bank. And basically what it is, is a non-depository bank. It's not a bank on sitting on the corner, but what it is, is we're connected to a lot of different banks. It's almost like a lending tree, if you will. So I'm here and I'm tucked in, but guys, I'm always wanting to put myself back as an individual uh, from the come from a media standpoint to put voices out here that you need to hear uh, to keep you connected and to keep you understanding that everything you see in here is not really, it's about a perception and sometimes not the whole overall truth, but man, I got a good one on today. I have, I have a man that really, you know, he, hey, <laughs> you know, he, he, he sort of, he sets the tone when it comes to integrity he sets the tone of, uh, you know, he's, he, you know, they put him in the fire, uh, but he always comes out with, 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 with you know, unburnt, not, nothing on him, smelling good, shining good. You know, it comes from him being understand, man, of, you know, what it really means out here 
to 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 really be authentic, you know. And uh, you know, so I always wanted to meet the brother. Um, and and this is my chance to actually be able to get to uh, to give an interview and let him speak on this platform. And anybody that's in Mecklenburg County probably have heard of his name. And this is Sheriff McFadden, the Sheriff of Mecklenburg County. And it's a pleasure to have you on the show. How you doing, Sheriff? I'm doing great. Thank you all so much for having me. Thank you all, all so right, much. man. All right. It's a pleasure having you on here, man. Uh, I was just jump into it. Uh, you know, uh, you know, sure. It's 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 a lot of different things going on out here when it comes to our community. When it comes to uh, equating, you know, our officers, of men of law, women to uh, getting into, uh, I, I guess, getting the bad side of the deal, saying that we're you know they're overreacting and we're killing you know civilians, killing just people uh, for no for for no reason. Um, once that gets to the media. How is this thing sort of looked at from your end? Because a lot, I know you know both sides. Um, tell me what the real truth of sometimes what people oversee, and tell me the truth about what's coming from you. You've been in the uh, been in uh, the law law, uh, you know, been a, uh, actually a you know in in law enforcement for forty years. That's a long time, man. So we're gonna hear from the expert today. You tell us what your story, what you see about how that looks out here. Well, thank you. And, and you know, I, I, I do not I want to say this. I do not want this to be our last conversation. And I, I want to encourage people for us to talk more so we can educate you on what we're doing. Uh, and I'm sorry for the headphones. Usually I'm in a shirt and tie and a three piece suit. Oh, but it man. is but it is Juneteenth. And I just came from the office because I did work today. But here's okay. but here's what we do wrong. We see it on TV and we react to social media and we don't have the facts. The mm -hmm. facts are unbelievable. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I will say this. Michael Brown, and you can say the sheriff said this, Michael yeah. Brown should not be dead. Well, yeah, Gary, yeah, sheriff, he should not be. But we didn't know how to react mm -hmm. to the actual incident. We just got all emotional. Mm -hmm. We said some things that shouldn't have been said. And what I mean, we they interviewed over 300 people in mm -hmm. Michael Brown's case. But what happened is they know that we came from an emotional setting. So we so emotional. Sometimes we add some things to that statement that is not truthful. And in doing that, the physical evidence does not match your statement. Mm. Then they say to you, you are not a credible witness, although you saw some of it, but your credibility will not stand up in court so the district attorney or the prosecutor is not going to allow you to testify. That is where we fail the system. That is where, now I said we fail the system because the system stands there ready to listen to what is going on, but we do not give factual information. Now I know some of the, and so my brother, I, I'm, I'm, like you said, I love the fire because I burn well in, in, in the coals. Now, some people say, well, the officer didn't say the truth. Well, no, the officer didn't say the truth or may have said some things that he shouldn't say, but you shouldn't mm -hmm. because your statement is going to contradict the officer's statement with factual information mm -hmm. that is supported by physical evidence. And here's why I'm going to tell you, my brother, and I'll be glad to share this with anybody. There's probably not five listeners to this conversation can tell me how far Michael Brown was from Officer Darren Wilson when he fired that first shot. Nobody, people don't look at that. Oh, well, he shot him in the head. He shot him. But factually, that is important. Mm -hmm. It is. Because, because here's why. It's over 100 feet. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, it's 180 feet away, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. And I have the report. Now, where's the report? The report is on the internet. Well, why do you have it? Well, because I searched for it. Did you search for it? No, you want to look at the YouTube video or you want to look at the TikTok video. And so you didn't go and search for it. I went and searched for it and read the report. So then at what point did Officer Darren Wilson fear for his life? At 110 feet, 100 feet, 75 feet? That question was never asked. So what happened is we get all emotional because we have our leaders fly into our city 
and get us riled up, which mm-hmm. is fine. Mm-hmm. But when the facts are on the table, are we seeking factual information or emotional information? So here's what I'm going to tell you. If you got five people emotional, let them still be emotional. Mm-hmm. But somebody needs to watch the hen house. Right. Exactly. And so when you're watching the hen house, make sure that they are experts in watching the hen house. Now, right. nothing against the people in their profession. I won't call them because the last time I said that, you know, they got a little tight. But here's what I'm saying. If you have a leaky faucet at your house, mm-hmm. you will not call an electrician to do that. Right. Mm-hmm. If you have something dealing with law enforcement, why don't you seek out those law enforcement officers or people with a past experience in law enforcement and 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 allow them to help you ask the questions? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that's what and, and that's what it is. You know, we can say that he was shot four times, but what was the trajectory of the shot? Mm-hmm. You know, we like to ask how many times he's been shot. Well, we can tell you five times. But what's the trajectory of the shot is more important in how many times he was shot. Mm-hmm. Right. So we can talk about this, but this is something just to put on your mind. So what happened is we get emotional and they said, think about this. Every time you hear a march, you hear the same thing. We want justice. Mm-hmm. When do we want it? We want it now. Mm-hmm. Why are we still asking for justice 20 years later? Mm-hmm. And the reason why it is hard for us to understand on how to get justice. Wow. Now, Man. I know people say, well, why? No, because you're asking the wrong people to seek justice for you, but somebody else is asking people to seek justice for them, and they are probably asking the right people. And that's why it is so upsetting for us when we don't get justice in these cases that it, it, it takes us to another level. Sure, we're going to have protests. Sure, we're going to have riots because we have never gotten justice. And I ask this question, do you know how to get justice? And do you know how to seek justice in order for them to bring you justice? Mm. That sounds like a lot, but that's it is what we're, where we need to be. Wow, man. I tell you. Wow. You know. <laughs> yeah. So we asking all the wrong questions to the wrong people. Ain't it? Right. And, and here's an example. Here's an example. And I, and I teach not teach this because I can't teach anybody. I was learning. I can't teach nobody, but I can lecture. Mm-hmm. If if two young men are walking down the street and the police walks up to them and say, hey, can I talk to you all for a minute? Mm-hmm. I suggest you be quiet for a moment. Now, and here's what happens. The officer is going to say something like this. Hey, man, we just got a call down the street to say somebody was seen climbing out of a window and they fit your description. Now, believe it or not to my listeners, That is not a question. That is a statement. The officer never asks you anything. He basically Mm -hmm. said there is a window broken in down the street. Somebody saw somebody climbing through the window that fit your description. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The only thing you should say, okay. And then what? Yeah, right. Because he never asked you a question. But because we are emotional and because mm-hmm. we want to well well why you think it's me okay once you have taken that bait we're going to start reeling you in mm-hmm. wow but Man. here's what i tell people the only thing that you have to ask the officer and you go from there if an officer stops you on the street you should say and let him talk to for a minute here's the two things that you should ask officer am i under arrest or am i being detained Period. Period. Wow. Period. Y'all heard that. Y'all better, I'm telling you, y'all better listen to this. This is Sheriff McFadden telling you now. Okay. Am I being under, am I under arrest or am I being detained? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Period. Now, mm-hmm. if he says you're under arrest, then you need to be quiet until he says something. Now, here's, now here's a myth that somebody said. If you're being arrested, a lawyer will fuss, people will fuss. But let me tell you this. This is this is gospel. Yeah. I do not have to read you your rights. Unless I'm going to question you. Mm. 
Wow, that's a jewel. Oh, man. So if you're under arrest, I, I will probably read you, my, read you your rights, mm -hmm. but I'm going to say you are under arrest. Mm -hmm. At that point, if you are under arrest, you need to be very selective of what you're going to say after that. Mm. Because here's what the, here's what the trick is, and let me say this. Forgive me for saying this, y'all. Forgive me for saying this. In 22 years, I've never heard this word in court when it's my case. I've never heard the word, the phrase, not guilty. What? I have never lost a homicide case in court in 22 years. Wow. You can't find a lawyer that says he beat me in a homicide case in Charlotte, North Carolina or anywhere in the United States. Why? Because I study this and I take pride in it. So yeah. imagine this. If I arrest you and, and, and you are under arrest and I put you in the back seat of this car, it is something called spontaneous, spontaneous utterance. That means you just talk. You just talk. You just talk. You, you, you're just making statements. You are under arrest. Mm -hmm. And so then when I put you in the back seat of the car, you say, well, man, you ain't got nothing on me. You ain't got nothing on me. How do you know I had the gun? I ain't never asked you about a gun. <laughs> well, why do you think I got the gun? Right. I, I, I ain't never had, you know, why, you know, man, what? And all I'm going to do is say, mm hmm, okay, really? Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Really? Uh huh. Okay mm -hmm. is not a question. Mm -hmm. yeah. Really? Uh huh. Okay is just acknowledging I hear you. I hear you. Right. I've never mm -hmm. asked you a question, but I guarantee you when you come to court, you're going to say, well, did you read him his rights? No, I told him he was under arrest. <sighs> I never asked him a question. He was just talking. He was just talking. Man. Spontaneous utterance. Look uh, it up. Wow. Man, I'm telling y'all guys. No. See, this right here, man, this is probably one of the most profound interviews I've done because law is law, guys. Law is law. Law is law. And I'm now telling here's, you. Now, here's what now, happens. Here's what, stuff, we talk about that fluff. See, these are the principles. Principles. The principles. So imagine the most dangerous thing that we have, but we don't use it, is our cell phones. Mm -hmm. So imagine we get stopped on the street again, and mm -hmm. the officer says, can I talk to you all? And he says, well, you, Gary McFadden, match the description. So mm -hmm. the officer is going to be talking to me, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. My friend Marvin ain't got nothing to do with that. All Marvin needs to do is turn the camera around and hit record. Because mm. he's not talking to you. you he, he's not talking to Marvin. He's talking to the to, to sheriff or to Gary McFadden. Yeah. So when the officer says, you need to back up, guess what you need to say? Yes. You can say, okay, officer, I'm backing up. Now I'm backing up about 15 feet now. Is this far enough? All you're doing is narrating what the officer is saying. Now, here's the mistake that we make. We're filming it. Yeah. While your friend is talking to the officer, then if it's a get little, if it gets a little tight and the officer is going to arrest your friend, mm -hmm. you start recording for the officer. Here's what we normally say. Go ahead, Jay. I got it. Don't worry about it. <clears throat> Go ahead and stop, Jay. Stop. Listen to what they're saying. Stop resisting. I got it all on tape. I got it, Jay. What did you just do? You might as well hand the officer to that tape because you just told the jury, hey, Jay, stop resisting. I got it all just, on you, tape. Yeah, you just make, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So what do you do is stand back and just listen. Officer, yeah. I have nothing to do with what you're doing with him. I'm just standing back here filming. Mm -hmm. Yep. They cannot stop you from recording. Now, if he wants a copy of that, say, well, can I get a copy? Um... Give me your email or give me your superiors and I can send them a copy at some time. Mm -hmm. wow. Because who phone is this? That's your phone. Okay. You got nothing to do with what's going on, but what happened is back up, back up. And then all of a sudden they throw the bait to you. Mm -hmm. Well, you're not going to back up. And then what happens? Man, you ain't got to tell me what to do. Well, I'm asking you to back up because now you're interfering with my arrest. Well, I can stand here. Guess what? They're reeling you in. Yep, yep. Lock you up too. Yep. And then what happens? 
you inside of it also. And yeah. that's what happens. So emotion plays a lot in the criminal justice system. Wow, man. That is, this, this, is, this, is, this, is, this is, I'll tell you what, this is so important, man, when it comes to uh, just our mental health, the way we just observe our perspective, the way we react. The power is always in the way you react to something. Period. But, but Sheriff McFadden now is really make it just, it's just, it is what it is now, even when it comes to the criminal justice system and what, the, how the result ends up being that result. Right, because what the, the, the criminal justice system is going to rely on is factual information if it comes through evidence or testimony. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that is, and if I can do anything at any time, and we can do this again some other time, I can send you the document of, of uh, Michael Brown's case, but then I'm going to also tell people to look at page so-and-so and so-and-so. And so. Because what happens is you may have seen the officer shoot him, but you didn't see him when he was shot laying on the ground. Mm -hmm. But but we saw emotion. Yeah, man, he shot him. He was down on the ground three or four times. Well, the evidence don't show that. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. what happens is your five witness who was who was the eyewitness all of a, all of a sudden become less credible and the district attorney is not going to have them in court. Well, he saw no, but I know he saw part of it, but his credibility will hurt the case. And that's why you don't see a lot of cases coming to court. Mm. That's when you why. Of, sure. When you say credibility, is it more of what they have expounded on about the actual case itself or just their no, they're, no, they're, they're back, they're back. We can, no, we can deal with the history. That's not a problem because you can be a convicted felon and see something that nobody else sees. Right, right. And so what, so what I'm saying is this, if you tell me, and, and this is why I use so many of my, well, I didn't use a lot of people to, to, to uh, prosecute my cases, but I use their information. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't have, as they call snitches or people we pay, I didn't have these people to come to court. I just had great, credible people that give me credible information. Okay. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so what happens is we know that you, Michael Brown was, they say, sold drugs. We got that. Mm -hmm. Michael Brown was a knucklehead. You got that. But he was not a killer. Mm -hmm. Right. And so then we're going to have to, when I did homicide investigation, I don't care about the two pounds of of of, of Kush in the corner of the room. Mm -hmm. Right. I just need to know when they came in the house what they did. Yeah, he has that. Yes, he has that. But the facts remain that when my guy was sitting on the couch and he said the light flipped on, he saw a guy in a purple shirt and a blue hat. And, and the guy flipped the lights off and five, six shots. Okay? So then... As the neighbor says, after I heard the shots, I heard a guy, I heard the door slam and a car crank up. And I looked down and there's a guy wearing a purple shirt and a blue hat driving away. Mm. Mm. Then going down the street, I catch a camera with a guy passing the traffic light with a blue hat and a purple shirt. Then I get the gun that matched the bullet that killed the guy. My guy who's sitting on that two pounds of Kush statement is credible sure i sell drugs wow sure i did this and that but what i saw is that guy mm -hmm. kill my friend kill my friend wow man so yes i would you know yes i did that yes i did that and and if y'all want to take me to jail <laughs> take me to jail but right. that guy killed my friend wow man and that's this is why it is so important to help people understand your statement, factual, credible statement is very important. It's very important. Wow. Very important. Well, what, what do you think about, um, Sheriff, about, you know, of course, uh, you know, I'm about to be, you know, about to be 50 here in the next few weeks. I, I go back with the, you know, when hip hop and culture and music was, you know, it was always a part of growing up and, you know, uh, whether it be Motown, go to, to whatever music we're into. But now it's really at the point of whether it be good music, bad music. But now it's not only if the music is poison or bad for us and it's not uh, something that's positive. Um, now it's getting to the part of the criminal justice system that they're using what they're saying in their music 
to incriminate them and lock them up. They've been watching them for seven to eight years. And sometimes it is gang uh, related and things of that sort. But they're actually, listen, these guys are actually, from what I'm hearing, they're, what they're saying in their songs, they're using it against them in, in, in court. Yes. What do you think about that, Sheriff? I mean, well, is, it's, is, it's, is this it's, where it's, we are these days? This is where we are? With, it's, with it's, it's a very tough thing. And we have to be mindful of what we see, what we do, and how we react. Mm-hmm. And, and and here's why, you know, I have nothing against hip hop and nothing against the culture, nothing against, you know, um, whatever the music is called now. Yeah, you know, I have yeah. nothing against it. I, I listen to it all. My wife laughs at it all the time. I'm going on the road. I listen to it. I listen yeah. to it all. Yeah. But I listen to it so I will be educated enough to know what am I listening to. There you go. There you go. Mm-hmm. So when yeah. they're sitting there talking to me, mm-hmm. I know what that means. I, I know yeah. what they're saying. I, I know why. But then I don't pull it into my soul to emulate that too. Mm. <laughs> yeah. You know, we, yeah. we, we talk about that, you know, but if you listen at the music, is when it first started, it was talking about the chopper, the nine, the tech yeah. nine. And then when we see these videos, you know, we we throwing up the money. Yeah. You know, if, if that's you, that's good. Yeah. We have all the gold on, that's you, that's good. Yeah. But then when you sitting there with a bunch of guns. Yeah. And then you sitting there with a table with thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. And then you got a chopper sitting on top of it. <laughs> then that's the image that they see. Right. Exactly. And yeah. here's why. For our listeners, and I'm going to show you why. For our listeners, this is something that I, I, I talk about all the time. If you say a pit bull, what goes in your mind? Now, see. Most of the people have never been bit by a pit bull. Mm-hmm. No. But when you say pit bull, you think of a strong, stocky, muscular dog with a big chain around his neck mm-hmm. and somebody holding him and he's breathing hard and he will tear you apart. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But he's never bit you. You probably never even been up close to one scene, one scene alive up close. But that's the perception that you have. And that's the image that was placed in your head with all they talk about the pit bull. Mm -hmm. That's true. That's the same thing with society. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because here's what what I want to say. If we have a cookout at our house, you, me, or anybody else, Mm -hmm. and you invite everybody over, but when you see that one guy you would tell everybody to put your pocketbooks up, lock them in the trunk, because y'all know he'll steal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, we all, yeah, yeah. And he's and he's your family member. Yeah, it is, yeah. And he's I your know. cousin. Yeah. But we all know mm-hmm. that he'll steal. Now, he may yeah. not have never stole anything from us, but the word is he will steal. It's true, yeah. And so that's what true. we're doing with all this music and everything else, now somebody said, well, that's not true, Sheriff McFadden. Well, Here's what I'm going to tell you. Sometimes I'm in environments that you're not, you're not in. Sometimes I'm listening to conversations that you're not privy to. Wow. Sometimes I'm in the back back room, in the back room out on the porch, listen to the conversation that when they see it on TV, it's, it's changed because we can't really say that. Mm. Yeah. Got and so, so, so these are the things that I've heard. And I thank you because this is my 40th year in law enforcement. And sometimes I have to look at my hands and say, okay, I hear what they're saying, but I'm black. I'm black, and, and, right. And, mm-hmm. and, and that's important. So it's a lot that we could do, mm-hmm. but are we ready to do it? Now, I know this is going to hurt some feelings, but this is something that happened. We had a shooting in our city probably 20, 30 years ago of a female by a white officer. They sent a guy from Washington, D.C. to divide the black community. Mm. Now, y'all going to say, well, how's that? Because here's, here's what's happened. In every black community, there's a leader. Mm-hmm. That leader is he's a, the member of the NAACP, vice president, co-vice president, junior vice president. He also may be a pastor of the church, vice president, co-master of the church. Then he's going to be on the on the urban league board. Then he's going to be on the city council. Then he's going to be on this and that and that. So he's going to have five or six positions inside the city. 
in the city. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what they told us to do is have him call him as Reverend so and so, mm -hmm. and let's meet with him at his church. Mm -hmm. But then I have somebody else is going to meet with the local NAACP, and then I'm going to have somebody else meet with whatever organization he's in, fraternity. And mm -hmm. then what happened? He's going to have to decide on which one he's going to. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's so now, true. if he goes to the church, the NAACP said, well, you don't care about us over here. You know, you're the vice president. Well, I'm just trying to handle this at the church. Mm -hmm. Well, you don't care about us in the fraternity. Well, well, I'm just trying to handle this at the church. Or if he chooses. So then what happens is you get the organization, the fraternity, and the church to have an argument about why you don't come over here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it ain't so and, much. Yeah. And then we know that this, no matter what we say or how godly we are or how we say we are blessed, then meet with another pastor, meet with the bishop on that side of the city. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then you meet with the bishop on that side of the city on the same day. What happens is, well, why y'all meeting with Bishop McFadden? Mm -hmm. Well, we, we want to meet with him because he, he you know, he's the bishop. Well, why don't you know over here at the NAACP? Well, you know, my pastor, Bishop so-and-so, asked me to meet with him. Mm -hmm. Then we get in an argument where, you know, we're just going to have this meeting, you know, the Bishop McFadden is over there with, with his people. He, he don't care enough about the NAACP. You know, uh, he, he going to meet with his congregation. I told y'all, I told y'all that's how he was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yep. Wow, man. Yeah, you just broke it down. Yep. And then what happens? Mm -hmm. We all know how we get when, hmm, who do they think they are? Who do they think they are? Yep. And then yep. mm -hmm. while you doing this, they are working on the case. They working on the case. Yeah. Wow, man. They're working on the case. And they're watching, okay, we got them fighting now. And, and, and think about it. When you see these shootings, you have a perfect example was uh, the young man in Baltimore, Freddie Gray. Freddie Gray, yeah. If you go back and look at that footage, the mayor and the governor was fighting mm -hmm. on TV. Well, I called you and you didn't come. I called you, you didn't come. Then the district attorney and the police chief was on TV at a separate news conference. And then there were some other people meeting across the city at their news conference. You had three news conferences. Look at it. Three news conferences going at the same time. The mayor and the governor is fighting. The police uh, chief commissioner and the district attorney are having a meeting. And then the clergy are having a meeting over here. Man, look at all that, man. Yeah, right. Right. Wow. Now let's go to work and let's do what we need to do. Let's do what we need to do. You got them going all I'll tell you, man. I said that 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 uh that distractions is something else, man. I, I tell Every you day. It, it happens on TV media so much. And I I I, I try to talk to, to people that's open to really seeing the big picture. And um, you know, sometimes you have to be careful because you know you want to deal with what's right, but then you really see what's going on. And uh but I tell you what, Cheryl in fact, I mean. I, I can always see a man for, you know, what he stand for and what he do. But uh, but once you hear it from him and you can feel the, you know, just the truth, man, I got a whole nother level of, of, of respect and, uh, but, and I, but it's, for you. Because, I mean, you, but, I mean, because, I mean, behind the suit, you just a real brother, man. I mean, you give it to us like, hey, <laughs> you know. I, I tell him, <laughs> you either can listen to me or continue to do what you need to do. But I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am I am good. People say, and you you were right. They keep me in the fire. But yeah. I but it's good because they keep me in the fire. Because here's one of the best people. I know y'all think I'm crazy. I love boxing. Mm. The fighter who's the best fighter is that fighter who never lays down, who never takes a day off. I'm not mm. going to take two or three years off and come back. No, I'm mm -hmm. going to fight everybody. Mm -hmm. right. And here's why. This is a joke. We all been to school 
and we all see the, the, the great athletes that we had in high school. Mm -hmm. But if you see them now, they don't look like the same athlete when they was in school. No, they don't. Mm -mm. You know, they gain a little weight, they're a little chubbier, you know, they're a little yeah. slower. But mm -hmm. here's why I tell people that I love my job. I've only had a 30 day break in 40 years. The only time I had a break was July 31st, 2011 to September 1st, 2011. That's the only time I had a break in law enforcement. And so when people say, well, they're beating them up in the news. But, but, but when you have your stuff together, stuff they, they're supposed to attack you. Mm -hmm. They do. You're right. Mm -hmm. You ain't never seen nobody talk about the guy under the bridge. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, he got a bigger blanket than me. He ain't gonna never say that. <laughs> you know, yeah. his cardboard, he got more cardboard than I got. No, it's the person who's making the noise said, okay, that that that's a little different right there. Yeah, that's different. Yeah, right. And, and so that's what I that's what I pride myself yeah, on in, in, in taking taking the heat, not backing down. Yeah. And you know, it's sad sometimes I get up in the morning and tell my critics, okay, I'm up. I know y'all been up all night, but I'm up now. So if y'all want to follow me, come on. But you know, you but you got to bring a lunch. Mm -hmm. There you go, hot to somebody. You got That's to bring a lunch. Hot, yeah. You know, today today is yeah. a perfect example. Today is a holiday, Juneteenth. Yeah. None of my staff is in the office, but my mind said, go to the office mm -hmm. and work for a couple of hours. So yeah. imagine this: the North Carolina jail inspectors came to inspect the jail today, and here's what they said. Uh, the, the chief sent an email out saying, hey, the, the jail inspector today, we told them that nobody's here but uh, but a captain, but um, they can go ahead and inspect the jail. I text them back, well, I'm here today, and I'm going to be out here. When I went in there, you could see, like, oh, what are you doing? I'm the sheriff. Yeah, there you And go. he was like, well, I didn't expect you to be here. And you know what I said? I didn't expect you to be here either. Mm -hmm. But we are both here. And so yes, what happens is, you know, we, we can yeah. never we can never be comfortable, but yeah. we do get comfortable. And I learned that from my father. You can never be comfortable when you're at the top. Yeah. You, right. you always have to build another ring to step above mm -hmm. and continue. So you can never yes. be comfortable. Oh, man. I tell you, man, I, this is one of the best ones. We definitely got to get together, Sheriff. I'll tell you, man, uh, I know you definitely I'm looking a little bit in the bio. Uh, the mental health, behavioral, uh, was that the behavioral science, that type of thing. Um, you know, a lot of that goes into a lot of the things that's going on in our community, man. But uh, definitely want to uh, connect back with you. Sure. Have you Anytime. on the show. But, you know, just, you know, want to connect, you know, anything that you got going on. And let I want to get you involved with some things that I think that it can definitely be beneficial as well, brother. But it's. It's, well, uh, it's any last it's, comments that you want to share with the community I, uh, I just, you know, before we end this show? Here's what I want people to do first. And this is what my father said. It's hard to educate educated people. But here's what I want you to do. When you're speaking publicly or you're speaking on a subject, become educated about that subject first. Not what somebody mm -hmm. else told you. And here's what I'm going to blow your mind with before I leave. Mm -hmm. How many people on this show no Martin Luther King's real name because 99% of black America believe Martin Luther King's real name is Martin Luther King it's hmm. not it's not and so I know somebody gonna say he crazy well google it hmm. Martin Luther King real name is Michael King wow birth certificate death certificate is Michael King the la I'm going to give you something else, and then I can I will come back. 80%, I say 50% of America has never even heard Martin Luther King's mother's name. Mm. And 50% of a black America probably don't know how Martin Luther King's mother died. Mm. Well, Martin Luther King's mother died inside the same church, Ebenezer Baptist Church, that we go to visit so many times. Yeah, because of Martin Luther King, she was died playing the organ. And it is said that he she was killed by one of his followers. We don't people say that he's he's a follower, but he had some dealing with Martin Luther King. So imagine one of your followers kill your mother. Wow. But 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 here's why that's so important. We all been told 
Martin Luther King, Martin Luther King, Martin Luther King. A homeless guy told me that. A homeless guy, see? Mm -hmm. so, so don't ever write anybody out. You, you can go. learn from a homeless anybody. person. That's it, man. That's it. And so that's what I want to leave you. Become educated, become powerful, become knowledgeable. And then when you can speak with importance and courage, then you're going to say, well, yeah, why, why the sheriff is like this? Because this, the sheriff is not going to speak. Sometimes I speak with emotion, but my emotional speech is going to be supported by emotional facts also. Emotional facts. That's the key. That's it, bro. So it's going to come across that I'm emotional, but these are going to be emotional facts. And here's why. And I'll let you all know this, too. I'm going to try to create something, uh, which I don't have to create it. It's going to be in the works. And I'll let you all be the first to know that I'm going to have conversations with my deputies doing different traffic stops. And here's mm -hmm. why. The majority of the traffic stops that young African-Americans, blacks or people of color, you know, you got to cover all that because some people don't want to say black. You know, uh, yeah. black people of color, you know, and then we go with, you know, um, african American. So we'll say that. The majority of these stops are vehicular equipment or minor violation, taillight, expired tag, left turn yeah. signal or something like that. Yeah. These are called pretextual stops. Pretextual stops. So the pre and look it up. The, pre the pretextual stops is I'm stopping you for this. Because it is a legitimate legal stop mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that is probably going to lead me to something else. Just to lead me to something else. Wow, man. But, First but here, on the Metal Ben Show, man. Oh, my God. This is but think about it. Every one of these pretextual stops ends in, I mean, well, not everyone, but some of these pretextual stops end in a death. It does. So, so, so if you think about the last young man who was shot and killed that we know about, that's in Michigan, in Grand Rapids, Michigan, mm -hmm. and the officer was charged last Friday, it was because of not speeding, not drunk driving, not reckless driving, not running a stop sign. It's vehicular, the tag is expired or something. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. But that escalated to a death. It did. Mm-hmm. So imagine this, and this is the concept that I'm going to try. So imagine if I pull, I'm driving on the road, and I looked at uh, uh, Trooper Marvin looks at uh, Gary McFadden's tag on his car. I run the tag, and the tag comes back. Gary McFadden um, expired tag. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to capture that, send it to my dispatch, and say print that off. And then I'm then then Trooper Marvin is going to send Gary McFadden a letter. Uh, Mr. McFadden, we ran your tag while you were running down Trade Street. Um, June 13, 2022, and at 6 p.m., your tags expired. Um, that's not a ticket. That just said that you need to take care of your tag. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, how can we do that? Remember back in the day when you would run a stoplight and they would take a picture of your tag? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why can't we do the same thing? Right. So take a picture of your tag, say, this is your tag. We ran your tag. DMV says that your tag's expired. Um, please take care of that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, wow, man. So that will avoid so much of contact pretextual so we won't have these issues. Man, oh, man. I tell you, man. I tell you what. Um, we got the right man, uh, guys. Audience, you know, I, I, like I said, you know, that's what this is about. Now, y'all guys getting to really hear it from the horse's mouth. Um, I think that, and I'm not going to say just a racist or a, a, a race conscious thing, but for black men speaking on where we are these days, uh, 40, 40, 40 years of law enforcement, man. And, and see, he, he, he's coming from, a, he's coming from a, a level of just, you know, throw all the emotional stuff to the side. When, when the rubber hits the road, he's trying to tell you, this is what it's about, you know? So all the stuff you hear on the radio and all this, you know, oh, expert here, I'm an advocate here, spoke with, you know, he, he's, in, he's, in the, he's in the melting pot of where it really hits the road. And right. I, I'm glad to really hear it from you, man. 
Yes. Well, if, if but we don't take it, you know, we can do this again and we can do it live. We can do this in public. I don't yeah. care because yeah. I want people to understand if you take the young man, um, I can't think of his name. But, uh, it starts with a PH, uh, Fidel. Can't think of his name in uh, Mich not Michigan. When he was killed, when he was telling the officer that I have a gun, then he shot him in front of his girlfriend. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I hate to pronounce mispronounce his name. But if you look at the office, there were two officers on that scene. Yeah. So forget about what the officer did who did the shooting. Let's talk about the officer who didn't do the shooting. Mm. <laughs> yeah, right. You're right about that, though. Yeah. So if, if, if his life is in danger, why isn't your life was in danger? Mm -hmm. That's true. He just, he, but see, if you look at that thing, it shows where he stepped back, did did the shooting, and he was trying to figure out why you shooting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So then the question in court is, officer, I know you did the shooting. You said over here, well, officer, why didn't you do the shooting? Mm -hmm. And so then what? So then if if it's the same, you should react to the same because you're trained the same. You're trained the same, right? Wow, man. Mm -hmm. So if it was a trooper. Then y'all could be trained differently. But if you the same, uh, just think about George Floyd. Mm -hmm. If you train the same, why didn't the officer help? Why didn't the officer help? That's true. That's and so, true. And, and so then, what you have to do in your cities, there is something called ABLE that I, that we are a part of. Um, active bystander law and active bystanding law enforcement, and mm -hmm. that's out of Georgetown University. So then, your city or your a local agency should be a part of that program mm -hmm. to say, if you stand by and watch this, mm -hmm. you in trouble too with us. You in trouble. I like the way. Yeah, wow. you, 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 you're not my. You may not be criminally charged, mm -hmm. but you in trouble with us. But you in trouble. Yeah, yeah, you go. Mm -hmm. Right. Man. And so, so that's that's how you hold people accountable. Hope Not just say it, you hold people accountable for saying, you did it, you stood there and watched this, it's no question all of y'all are going with it. Mm -hmm. You know, all of y'all may not be charged, but you definitely will be investigated internally mm -hmm. with the uh, police department or, or sheriff's office. Wow. Well, hey, well, Sheriff, I tell you, man, you, 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 uh, and you, 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 what they say, you, you, you're wearing that crown, you're wearing it right, brother, you know, you're wearing it right, man. What can we do, uh, as you know, advocates will say, "Hey, Sheriff Gary McFat, that's our guy." You well, know, I mean, this is right just, How can we do to help you, man? What, 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 what? Do we I just need to corral around, you know, some things. I just want to educate help? my people. I just want to educate you my people. Educate. That's real. So, yeah. if you say, "Well, Sheriff, we want you to come over here and speak at this event," let's talk about education. That's Not just because so, because yeah. so, here's what I'll tell you: you can invite me, and I'll tell you this, the public: you can okay. invite me to any event. And just get up and say, well, why do y'all do this? And why do y'all do that? Why do y'all do this? And my cousin did this. You know what? I done been to a thousand of those events. <laughs> so you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to wait you out. You're going to talk about this. Yeah, I told him. I told him. You watch. I, I, you remember I told him. Yeah, you did. But there's no action behind that. Right. Mm -hmm. there, there is no action. You, yeah, I told him. He didn't answer my question. He, no, he didn't. Because you know why? I've been answering these same questions because there is nothing that's going to happen. Mm -hmm. you, you're not consistent and you're not dedicated to it. You you talk about it. It makes you feel good. And yeah, I'm going to hear, I'm going to ask him all the questions. He didn't answer my question. Okay. But did you get justice? And then will it continue to happen in your community? Yes. There you go. Mm -hmm. Wow. man. And that's, and that's what, so I'm looking for the platforms and the people who are willing to listen mm -hmm. and willing to learn. Mm -hmm. and be that. And, you know, like I said, it's nothing against what they're doing out there. When we have an officer-involved shooting, talk to the district attorney. Okay. Give the district attorney all the facts, okay? Right. That's for the criminal part of the investigation, mm -hmm. okay? Right. If, if Brother Bryn comes, that's the civil part of the investigation. Right, right, if, right. If, if the police come, give them internal part of the investigation. So not only he will be charged with civilly, criminally, Mm -hmm. But also inside the department, he'll also be charged because that's what you want to do. And here's what I'll tell you also, no matter what anybody tells you, if you have a, an experience that is not good with a law enforcement officer, mm -hmm. 
I don't care what your cousin said, your uncle said, your grandmama, your daddy. Don't ever say, what well, they ain't going to do nothing. It's not need to be reported. It does. Mm-hmm. Right. Because here's, here, here's the word that they're going to look for later. And I'm trying to write it down. When the federal government comes in to investigate that officer, when he shoots and kills somebody, yeah. they're going to look for pattern and practices. Pattern and practices. That because if sense. because here's what happens. There's one, in, and I know this, this sounds crazy coming from law enforcement, but I have to be honest with you. In every community, there is a bad officer. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And he is only known to the community. That's so but true. He's, but he's not known to the agency. Wow. And so then when you come to say, well, y'all know he's like that. No, we don't, because you never told us. Because you never told us. Hot show. Yeah, yes. man. We may not be able to sustain him every time, Mm -hmm. and we may not give him days off every time, Mm -hmm. but the pattern and practices are numerous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That goes back to, well, how do you know he's stealing? Well, every time he leaves, some money's missing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Every time he comes over, some money missing. Yeah. So then when we look at these patterns and practices, Imagine every time there's a fight with the officers, the fight goes well until he gets there. Until he gets it right. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. And so then we're going to start looking at this. They said, okay, okay. Every time he comes up, things get a little jacked up after that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or every time he comes up, he sicks his dog on people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Other people don't have to sick their dog, but every time he comes up, his dog bites somebody. Bite, That's bite called somebody. pattern and practices. Practices. That's so so, that's so, so then, so when you documenting it and you look at it, sure. That's when you say, "Well, this officer is is a great officer. Uh, he's been awarded because somebody else did pattern, pattern and practices on awarding him these great things." But in the neighborhood, we know that he is dirty. He dirty. Mm-hmm. And right. we know what he does. Yeah, right. And then all of a sudden now you want us to go back and look for that, but there's no documentation of it. And the reason and the reason I'm saying this and I know they say, why is he saying this? Because we talk about the same thing that we want to do all the time, building the bridges between the community and law enforcement. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so building that bridge to say we don't want that dirty officer inside. Now people say, well, no, 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 they are great officers. 90%, 95% of the, the departments have great officers, but that 5% is the one who's on the news. Gentlemen, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so yeah. that 5% is the one that will hurt your son. That 5% mm-hmm. is the one that will cause your agency to get sued and your taxes to go up because your city and county and state have to pay these million dollar lawsuits. Mm-hmm. So have it documented, make sure you, you be factual, and then you go from there. You go from there. Well, hey, man, y'all heard it first. It won't be the last time, I'll tell yes, you sir. that, man. Hey, uh, you know, share, you know, every time that, you know, someone has a platform, man, and I tell you, people got to understand, law is law. We all up under a certain, you know, accountability, man, going out here in the streets, whether we with our family, we in our homes, someone breaking in our homes, you know, uh, you know, Sheriff McFadden is an advocate of, of the truth and the facts, man. And, that's uh, all. I'm glad to have you on the show, man. And uh, we're going to definitely have you over again. And Anytime. the thing is, is uh, you know, uh, I, I got your number. We're going to definitely, I'm going to contact you, man, because there's a lot of things I do want you to definitely put on a panel discussion with some things that I got coming here in the Charlotte here in the near future. Please do. We'll be glad right. to. And like the audience said, if they, you know, if they want me to come and see them, you know, it's just a car and a gas. That's it. Okay. The, the, that's the, 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 I, I travel just to speak to, because that's what we have to do. You have to. Yep. You have to. You do. I yeah. appreciate it. Thank you so much, Sheriff. Thank you, fact, sir. Man. Thank God you. bless you all. Thank you, brother. All right. Thank you.